Okay, I know you're here looking for the weekend and rewind, but I couldn't just let another day pass without naming my 2017 team of the year. Because after I saw 8.8 .8 million fans vote for their favorite players for the UEFA team of the year, which ended up with these players in a 4-4-2 formation, Mike K rolled the lineup. Buffon was in goal, as you can see, then Danny Alves, Sergio Ramos, Giorgio Chiellini, and Marcelo across the back line, then Eden Hazard, Tony Cruz, Luka Modric and Kevin De Bruyne in the midfield and Ronaldo and Messi up top. And I was like, what the fuck? The team doesn't even have a traditional striker. And then I remember the FIFA Pro World 11, which was dropped back in October. And it had a 4-4-2 formation as well. And this is voted on from players from around the world. And it had Buffon in goal, Danny Alves, Sergio Ramos, Leo Benucci and Marcelo in the back line. Then Modric, Iniesta, Tony Cruz and Neymar in midfield and then Messi and Ronaldo up top, and I was like, what? This squad needs a proper striker. What's going on with these voters? And then I saw some of the guys in the FIFA space put out their ultimate teams of the year, like Spencer, who went with a 4-3-3, and Navas in goal, and I like that pick a lot, because I don't really feel like Navas gets the respect he deserves. Even though we talk about it, he still doesn't get that respect. Then in the back, he's got Marcelo, Sergio Ramos, Leo Benucci, and Dave Azpilicueta. And I'm like, Benucci, have you watched any AC Milan games this season? Come on, Spen. Then in midfield, you got Tony Cruz, Kevin De Bruyne, and N'Golo Conte. Now, I'm not really sure on Cruz. I feel like there's a better option there. And then up top, you've got Ronaldo, Messi, and Kane as the main striker in between those two guys. And I feel like it's pretty hard to argue with those three picks up top. And then Matt HG Gamer, he went with a 4-1-2-3 formation, and he started with De Gea in goal, which, okay, I can see that. Then Marcelo, Sergio Ramos, Bonucci, and Valencia. I mean, come on, Matt. You can't have two Manchester United players in there when you're a Liverpool supporter. That's not allowed. And then Conte holding, and Modric, which I like better than Cruz, and Kevin De Bruyne above Conte. And then finally you have Ronaldo, Kane, and Messi up top. So, anyway, in summation, after hearing from the fans who voted, and the players who actually play the game who voted, and then some of my favorite YouTubers in People, I didn't want to be left out. So here's my team. And I'm gonna scoot over this way so we can put the faces right here. So for me, it starts with a formation. And because I know the attack that I'm gonna pick is going to dominate possession, I can lose a defender because I know we won't be defending much. So I'm going with a 3-4-3. Three, yeah, that's right, suckers. And in goal, I'm going with Gigi Buffon. Not only because he's the GOAT, but because every team needs a leader that commands respect, especially when your squad is full of world-class players. And for me, no other goalkeeper in the world garners as much respect as Buffon. Easy pick. And in the back, I'm going with Marcelo, Sergio Ramos, some familiar names, of course, and Dave Azpilicueta. Now, Marcelo and Sergio Ramos are winners who tend to play at their highest level in the biggest games. They both had great seasons in 2017 or over that calendar year, and they also command respect. And then for me, Dave, he's like the new Philip Lom who can play well in any position that you put him in, and he does it without complaint, which I love. So his versatility could prove very useful, especially in a back three. Also, I'm gonna need Marcelo to sit at home a little bit because it's a back three, and I don't need him bombing forward all the time, but he's so good at bombing forward, which means if he does, I wanna have two midfielders who have tireless work rates and high IQ sitting right in front of this back three, and it's gonna be Angola Conte, and I love me some N'Golo Conte, and Luka Modric, who, for me, just edged out Tony Cruz and Thiago Alcantara, who didn't really get named in any of the other lists. And then, right above them, I'm going with Kevin De Bruyne, who seems to get better with each passing game, and then Neymar, who also didn't seem to get named to too many Team of the Years this year. But he should be, just for being the biggest reason why Barcelona came from behind to beat PSG in that impossible comeback in the Champions League. You guys remember that game? I do. It was a good one. Which leads us with three up top, and I think we can all agree that Cristiano Ronaldo and Leo Messi are locks. No question, end of discussion, do not at me. But as much as I continue to be in awe of his progression as a player and his dominance in the Premier League when he's a marked man because everyone knows what he's now capable of, I think Robert Lewandowski is a better all-around player than Harry Kane. I really do, and I actually feel pretty bad saying this out loud because Harry Kane is the man and he continues to prove people wrong game in and game out. But 
Lewandowski put up great numbers in 2017 too, and he set a record for the most goals ever scored in a World Cup qualifying campaign with Poland, who are nowhere near as good as the players that he has on his club team with Bayern Munich. So that means he finds a way to have success no matter who he's surrounded by, and I like that about him. So that's it, that's my team, and I know you love it, but if you don't, and I'm not sure how that's possible, please let me know who you would pick instead, and then make sure you follow me on Twitter and Instagram, at Jimmy Conrad, to find out where I am in the world right now, because if I'm in your part of the world, we're gonna do a pickup game for sure, and you guys need to play, especially on my team so we can dominate some fools. Later.